In the 1970s, the Soviet Union developed a large-scale program for the construction of nuclear power plants of various types. The European part of the country's territory was to be covered with a dense nuclear network by the end of the 80s. But for various reasons, most of these plants were not completed. They were simply abandoned, despite the fact that the readiness of some of them reached 80%. Each NPP on my list has its own unique history. Hundreds of Soviet specialists worked at the construction of each of these plants. But in this video I will try to briefly talk about each of these stations, so that the video does not get too long. The first station I want to talk about is the Crimean Nuclear Power Plant. This abandoned facility is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most expensive nuclear reactor in the world that remained unbuilt. The Crimean Nuclear Power Plant was built on the bank of the Aktash Reservoir, which was to act as a cooling pond. The construction of the Crimean NPP began at the very end of the 70s. As usual, the creation of the necessary infrastructure was accompanied by the construction of the ATU city, which first housed builders and power engineers. This is how the town of Shelkino, named in honor of the Soviet nuclear physicist Kirill Shelkin, appeared on the map of the peninsula. In 1981, work began on two power units of the first stage of the plant. It was to provide electricity to the whole Crimea. This NPP was being built at a crazy pace. But a year after the Chernobyl accident, in 1987, the construction of the Crimean NPP was suspended. At that time, the degree of readiness of the first power unit reached 80%. Simply fantastic money was literally buried in the ground. The Crimean NPP became an object of worship for lovers of abandoned architecture and electronic music. Since the end of the 90s right in the engine room of the unfinished 1SC power unit held discos of the festival, Republic of Kazantip. Also this nuclear power plant was filmed in several movies, for example, in 2007 the movie Inhabited Island was filmed there. Now this building continues to slowly deteriorate. Nuclear fuel was not imported here, so this nuclear power plant does not pose any radiation danger. But the Crimean plant has an almost complete twin, the abandoned unfinished nuclear power plant Stendhal, which was, or rather was, in Germany, literally a hundred kilometers from Berlin. It was being built according to the same Soviet design as the Crimean plant. By the time construction was halted, the readiness of the first power unit was 85%. The only significant difference between it and the Crimean NPP is that the German plant used cooling towers rather than a water reservoir to cool the reactor. The power plant was planned to become not only the largest nuclear power plant in East Germany, but also the largest nuclear power plant in the entire country. But the safety of the Soviet design was questioned, and all work plans and further construction were suspended. Currently, the Stendhal NPP has already been completely dismantled. A pulp and paper mill now operates on the site of the former plant, and all three cooling towers that were built, each 150 meters high, were dismantled in the 90s. In the mid-1970s, the Soviet authorities decided to start construction of a nuclear power plant on the territory of the Buisky district of the Kostroma region, near the village of Chistibori, on the right bank of the Kostroma River. This nuclear power plant was to become the central one and supply electricity to Moscow and the entire Moscow region. The main peculiarity of this plant was that unlike most NPPs of the 80s, it was planned to use VBR-1000 reactors here instead of RBMK-1000 reactors, which were used in Chernobyl. Work began in 1979, but was curtailed after the Chernobyl disaster. But unlike other abandoned NPPs, Kostromskaya was tried to be rebuilt. In 1996, a referendum was held in the region, during which the population opposed the resumption of construction of the plant. Later, in 2010, they started talking about the construction of the Kostroma NPP again, and even Rosatom seriously announced that construction work would begin in the next few years. I think it is a very bad idea to build a nuclear power plant based on ruins. Not only did the Soviet Union build nuclear power plants in Germany, but in the late 60s there were plans to build nuclear power plants in Cuba. When an agreement on cooperation in the nuclear industry was signed between Cuba and the Soviet Union in 1975, a plan was adopted to build three nuclear power plants, one of which was to be the Hurricane Plant. It was planned to install four power units with VDR-1000 reactors. 
Most of the equipment and materials for the construction of the NPP were supplied by the Soviet Union. More than 400 Soviet specialists participated in the construction of the plant. However, with the collapse of the USSR and change of government in Russia, the issue of NPP construction in Cuba was closed. One of the power units was 95% ready, 2 to 25%, and two more were undergoing preparatory work. From our list of unfinished nuclear power plants, the Cuban one turned out to be the most completed. And the saddest thing is that the $600 million that the Soviet Union invested in this construction were buried in the ground again. In the late 1970s, construction of the Tatarskaya nuclear power plant began. The need for electricity was due to the launch of industrial enterprises in the region, including Kamaz. The site for construction was chosen half a hundred kilometers from Nizhnikamsk. The project envisaged construction of four power units with VBR-1000 reactors with a total capacity of 4 gigawatts. Construction of the first power unit started in 1987. The readiness of the NPP was estimated at 80 percent. Its launch was scheduled for 1992. But the construction was also hindered by the Chernobyl disaster, or rather the public reaction to it. The first rallies against the launch of the plant were held in Kazan in the late 80s. According to activists, the consequences of a possible accident in the region would have been particularly severe, because this nuclear power plant is located at the confluence of the major rivers Vyatka, Kama, and Volga. In addition, the case of a breach of the Kama Dam and possible flooding of the plant only 400 kilometers away from the NPP. Around the same time the construction of a nuclear power plant in neighboring Bashkiria was underway. This NPP was built according to the similar project of the Tatar NPP, but here they had time to do even less. Only the first power unit was at the stage of construction of the reactor hall and engine room. Only excavations were ready for the rest of the nuclear part of the complex. The funds were mostly spent on infrastructure and the satellite village of Agital. In addition to traditional NPPs designed to generate electricity, the Soviet Union built other types of nuclear power plants. In the 70s, construction of nuclear thermal power plants was started, which, in addition to generating electricity, could heat cities. It was assumed that the introduction of nuclear reactors for heating purposes would save fuel oil and gas. Several ATECs in the European part of the Soviet Union, including the Kharkov ATEC, were planned to replace the expensive delivery of coal from Siberia for conventional CHPPs. The construction of the main structures of the Kharkov ATPP was never started, only the construction of infrastructure and preparation for the main works were underway. Soon the plants suffered the fate of many nuclear power plants of the former USSR, the project was cancelled and abandoned. However, in the Borky settlement near Kharkov, several residential houses were built for the plant's workers. Two more such APPPs as in Kharkov were built in Melitopol and Odessa. The Odessa analog was luckier, the satellite town Tepladar was built in full, having had time to finish the startup of the reserve boiler house, but the construction of power units was not completed. As a result, the boiler house necessary for the startup of the first reactor heats the town of Tepladar. But the construction of the Minsk ATPP began in 1983. It was simply grandiose, a Komsomol construction site, which brought together three and a half thousand people from all over the Union. There were no tent camps, which were customary for construction sites of those years. Construction began with the erection of housing for workers. After the accident at the Chernobyl NPP, the construction of the Minsk ATPP was suspended, and all the workers were sent to liquidate the accident at the Chernobyl NPP. However, taking into account the significant amount of construction work performed at the site of Minsk ATEC, this plant was decided to be converted into a conventional thermal power plant using fossil fuel. Now this plant is called CHPP-5 and is still operating. You will be surprised again, but apart from nuclear power plants and ATEX there was a third type of nuclear power plants. These plants were called AST, which means Nuclear Heat Supply Station. In fact, they were nuclear boilers that produced only thermal energy for heating large cities. Such nuclear heat supply stations were going to be built in 35 cities of the Soviet Union. In the 80s, two such stations were almost completely built near Voronezh and Nizhny Novgorod. 
But even here the work was not completed due to the economic crisis and protests of the local population. Besides Germany and Cuba, the Soviet Union was building a nuclear power plant in one more country. This station is Zernowiec, which was built in Poland according to the Soviet project. The first two power units were laid by Soviet specialists on January 1, 1983, but later this project was abandoned completely. When the Soviet Union collapsed in the 90s, more than half of the Polish population opposed the construction of a nuclear power plant in the country. Even during the construction phase, the term Tsarnabel existed, which connected the new nuclear power plant Zernowiec in Chernobyl. After the Chernobyl accident, this name spread like a bogeyman throughout the country. Interestingly, but now the Polish government is thinking about continuing the construction of this station, but it is not clear how they will do it, because the ruins of this nuclear power plant have already sunk. The construction of nuclear power plants slowed down after the Chernobyl accident, that's a fact. However, this was not even the reason for the construction freeze, because the 1957 disaster at the Mayak chemical plant in the Chelyabinsk region, which was close in scale, did not slow down the development of the nuclear industry. Perhaps the unfavorable economic situation due to the collapse of the Soviet Union had a greater impact. The Crimean NPP became the most famous among unfinished nuclear power plants in the world. Partly because of its location in a resort region, partly because of its high degree of readiness and, consequently, its tourist appeal for thrill-seekers. For several years, the station hosted the Kazantip Music Festival, which was named after the island where the NPP is located. As always, thank you for your attention. Subscribe to the channel and write your comments under this video.